Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Let's Plant Recap. This is the show where I look at your comments from the last episode and react to it. So the previous episode was episode 97 titled, I think you should join your local cactus and succulent society. If you haven't seen the video yet, then I would highly recommend that you watch it, especially if you're on the fence about whether you should join or not join your local cactus and succulent society. This video in particular discusses the Cactus and Succulent Society of Australia, their benefits, their perks, how to join them. In my case, it was quite easy. I joined them immediately after the plant show. They had a booth there where you could sign up. But otherwise, as I stated in the video, you could just head over to cssaustralia.org.au and do it on your own. We have several comments here and let's have a look at them one by one. First comment is from CC. Sounds good. We'll get down to a meeting in the new year. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think the next meeting would be about... Was it about pest management? I can't remember. I, I've i seen the newsletter. They, they presented us with a list of upcoming topics, but I can't remember what the next topic was. But yeah, all I know is that I marked it. I made a mental note that it's something that I am very interested in. It might have been something about pests, but at the same time, it might have been something about cultivars, about hybrids. I can't remember anymore. <laughs> Next comment is from Lovely Sally. So cool that you joined the club. I love going there each month. Hope you enjoy it. There's a plane overhead. It's a great group of people. Everyone is so friendly and there's always something to, new to learn. Great clip. Always look forward to them. Thank you for the welcome, Sally. And yeah, I enjoyed myself during the first, my first ever CSSA meeting. It was so nice seeing a bunch of people who I've only ever interacted with online. And of course, the highlight for me was when I finally met Nolin face to face. So yeah, I think it's going to be like this every meeting from now on, you know? From Tonti Vergara, is it a requirement to attend the monthly meetings? As far from what I could gather, no. Because I've, uh, I've talked, chatted with a few people in there and they said that they haven't been they haven't been to one of the meetings in quite a while. So I guess you're not required. And Tonti followed up asking whether the $20 for the membership fee went towards the entrance for the CSA, CSSA show. And according to W Robo, no, the 20 is basically for the monthly journal, bi-monthly journal and newsletter. So for the show, unless you're volunteering or selling or competing in it, then you would have you would still have to pay for entrance. From Suzy Pai 11, I was thinking I wanted to join when you posted videos on the show earlier. Mount Waverly is a bit of hike from where we though. Yeah, like I said, I don't think that should be an excuse unless you really can't spare the time. In my case, uh, the commute, the drive was about one hour during normal traffic and that's if I bypass uh, the, toll, the toll roads. If I go through City Link, it would take me 15 minutes less, about 45 minutes. That's under regular uh, traffic conditions. And I remember that later that night, the drive home was just a bit over half an hour because there wasn't much traffic anymore and I took City Link. Since you're from Werribee, that means that there's another 15-20 uh, minutes to that drive. But, but, yeah, I would say it's just another 10 minutes. So, it's not bad. But trust me, it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth the drive. You should at least try it out for if you're going to join in January, then yeah, try it out. The next meeting would be the fourth. Tuesday of January and that's let me just check the calendar that should be the 22nd of January there's still quite a while before then so lots of time to prepare <laughs> from Rose Hussey definitely joining up next year it looks like so much fun and the endless possibilities of adding more plants to my garden is definitely another reason to join great video chuck was really good to see more about what goes in the meetings you did make me a little dizzy with a walk and talking serious at the end though <laughs> yeah sorry for that i was getting a bit restless because i was trying to recall what happened trying to recount what happened that night yeah i was so excited so 
I don't know, overwhelmed? <laughs> yeah, basically I was just restless. Yeah, sorry about that again. From Monolop. So it's basically a plant or succulent lover's dream. A lot of succulents for sale, a lot of succulent materials, a lot of people that love succulents, and a lot of amazing succulents to see. So it's basically everything succulent. Yeah, pretty much. You nailed it on the head. <laughs> Another thing that's great about this is that the topics vary from meeting to meeting. So it's never the same thing. I'm not sure if the topics cycle every year. I imagine it would. Maybe just with a bit of twist or additional information or updated information. But what do I know? It's my first time. <laughs> from W Robo, not on Zuka. Thank you for confirming. I wasn't sure as well when I was just looking at the photo. I immediately thought Onzuka because of the white, because of the cover. But when I looked closely, well, the photo was small, but looking closely at the ribs, it looks like it had this uh, ridges. And it doesn't look like the Onzuka that I shot at the show. So, yeah. Thank you for confirming my suspicions. From Anita. This has inspired me to look up Succulent and Cactus Society in my state, Queensland. Yes, you should definitely look it up. It's the same society, just a different set of members. Because of course, everyone can just go from one state to the other. It's going to be quite a commute. And if you're thinking of joining, you should definitely check it out. The next meeting would be on January, so... Yeah, you still got time to think about it. Yeah, you might be hearing that. It looks like it is showering now. And I was planning to do a bit of work in the garden, so yeah, I might have to push it back later. From Janet Ursel. Gymno Calisium are high on my wish list also. Primarily because I like having a varied collection and it is one of the few cacti that will thrive and flower in low light conditions. Oh. As for a society, I can't find an active one within range. My major my nearest major city had one in 2006, but I can't find any more recent references to it. By the way, would you have recommendations for smaller Echeveria that do not require full sun? So far, all I have, all I have is an Echeveria Purposorum, a couple of small morning beauties, because I managed to build a matter plant. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to unpack in your comment, and I already responded to it, so let's have a look at my comment. First of all, you made it to the latest episode. Congrats! Yeah, uh, Janet was commenting on all of my, on almost all of my videos. I noticed that she was binging, she was binge watching the entire stretch of Let's Plant and she caught up finally. About your question, I find it that I find that it is hard to find an Echeveria that will not look good without enough light. With that said, I have an Echeveria Palida and Echeveria Golden Glow, a hybrid based on Palida, sitting close to the eaves and they do not seem to be stretching despite getting a lot less sunlight than the others. I could, yeah, here's what they look like. This is the Palida and this is the Golden Glow. And coincidentally, both of them are green. That might have something to do with it, but maybe it's just a trait of this species. I can see that they're twisting and turning towards the sun though, so I wouldn't completely say that they are okay in low light, but yeah, worth a shot. And finally, from Chris Carmen, Hey Chuck, I recently repotted my Echeveria Gibiflora, but after less than a week, the leaf gets soft. Is this normal normal, or do I need to be worried? Any advice? Thanks. So that's quite vague and you know, there's a lot of things that could happen. So I think one of the things that you should check is if there are any yellowing of the leaves, not browning, you know when brown, they, they usually get brown when they dry up and when the leaf dries up and detaches. What you want to look out for is for yellows. Uh, the leaves are still fleshy, and then it goes yellow or uh, transparent or translucent. That's a sign of rot. The leaves going soft would mean that it is either rotting or it's just dehydrated, so you have to distinguish, differentiate between the two. You must know, you must find out if it is just normal dehydration or not. And if it's just dehydration then you're in luck you could just water it again so it would be so it could so it could get back the pressure in the leaves the hydrostatic pressure you know because it's just getting limp because it's not holding enough water but if it's rot 
it might be quite difficult. You would have to chop off the rotten bits and keep the healthy part. Hopefully it hasn't gone through to the core all the way to the tip. If it reaches the tip and you could see browning or darkening in the middle, then you're out of luck. It's already gone. But we're getting too far ahead of ourselves now. Basically, you could just check, you could uproot it. You said you repotted it recently. If you haven't been watering it too much or it didn't look rotting when around the time that you were repotting, then maybe it's just dehydrated. So yeah, just observe. I'm looking at my Facebook version of this video. I see a lot of views, 225, and a lot of reactions, 27 reactions. But unfortunately, no comments. Guys, where are your comments? <laughs> oh well, maybe next time. And now let's discuss a preview of the next episode. So if you've been following my random postings on Facebook and on the community tab on YouTube, I've been posting a bit about our weather forecast, how it's getting too hot now. And it's expected since we're now in, at the start of summer in the southern hemisphere and that's the topic of the next episode in the next episode i'm going to ask and answer the question of how much light is enough light for succulents i think this is something that a lot of people still struggle with so it might be a timely topic i guess and here's a preview let's take a look at this spot next so the plants on this spot seem to be oriented properly or at least they're facing directly upwards and looking at all of the flowers on these sedums it looks like they are all upright which tells me that they are getting enough sun they do not need to reorient themselves to find a lot more exposure so this spot right here is getting enough sun exposure and that's it for this episode of recap i'm not yet sure but i might not be able to do a recap for the next for the rest of the month because i would be busy spending the holidays with my family at best i might just do a very simplistic recap just speak on my phone no editing very minimal editing i guess i think that should still work i hope you don't mind though and yeah enjoy your holidays as well i still have a bunch of uh, let's plant episodes that are already filmed and i'm about to film this weekend and that might cover the entire december but that entirely depends on whether or not i get the time to edit all of them because there's a lot of raw footage so i'll keep you posted i'll let you know if i need more time or if I, I should just make a break since it's the holidays anyway i might just spend the time with the family so just stay tuned for announcements and make sure you're subscribed or following me on my social media accounts that way you know that way you would see when i release that announcement but in any case, you'll find out first in the community tab here on YouTube. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.